And then last but not least, which is my secret sauce. Before you release any music to a platform, it needs to be mixed. Today, I'm going to be covering how to mix your music using Native Instruments Machine. Before you even begin mixing, just listen to what is going on with your composition. During this stage, make a decision on some important elements that you will want to stand out. It could be a vocal, a bass, drums, or even the melody. Once you have made a decision, it is now time to prepare your mix. What I mean by prepare is that you will want to be organized. Being organized helps your mixing process go smoother. One of the things I like about Machine is that it saves us a crucial step with subgroups. I will get into this in just a bit. But first, let's take a look at organization. First, make sure your tracks are labeled properly. One thing I like to do is have my tracks lined up something like this. Kick, snare, hat one, hat two, etc. To make it easier, feel free to color code. Next, rearrange the tracks and be sure the pre-listen switch is turned off. Now simply click and hold a sound slot and drag the sound to your desired position. For example, you might have a couple of kicks and some snares. You can make the kicks red and the snares yellow. I like to drag any unused files further down on the list. Just a moment ago, I was talking about a step that Machine saves us. This step is subgrouping. By default, Machine is set up like this. Machine has three levels, sound, group, and master. Notice how the sound is automatically routed to the group. This allows us to affect the entire sound group at once. Since we are in a digital era, we will want to check our preferences to make sure our buffer is raised a bit. I usually have mine set around 512, but feel free to bump it up to 1024. Gain staging should have been done during the recording process, but if you missed this step, you will want to watch my video about gain staging. In the video, I talk about levels at or around negative 10 as a sweet spot. Once your sounds are properly gain staged, you will want to begin with the volume. Listen to the mix and either raise the fader or lower the fader to your desired position. This is important. This can place an instrument closer to you or further away. This is known as depth. We can enhance the depth of our mixes by using plugins such as reverbs and delays. It is a good time to be thinking about the balance of your mix. You have left to right and everything in between. Use the pan to place the instruments in a certain position. I usually will keep my kick up the middle, but I might pan my hi-hats to the left or right. Sometimes I will go extreme. Same for other synths and instruments. We can use tools such as EQs and compressors to shape and control our sound. Feel free to add a bit or go even extreme. Now that we have some education, let's take a look at a mix that I did here in Machine. All right, so here we are inside of the machine and I wanna first start with this vocal sample here. So what I'm gonna do is remove these plugins here and then we're gonna start with Serato Sample is the first plugin that I'm using. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this on the screen here. And as you can see right away, the filter is at 145. So just already using the filter inside of Throttle Sample to basically shave off that high end. So let's listen to what that sounds like here. And if I was to take off the filter, so I'm gonna go ahead and move this back to its normal position right around there somewhere. This is what it sounds like. Hey, just calling to check on you. I hope you're doing okay. So it's the intro to this song that I sampled from YouTube. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do back so we don't mess that up there. All right, so the next thing I went ahead and did was add this flanger. And this flanger is very subtle. The only thing I really adjusted here was the mix. So I got the mix set at 10%. And that's pretty much all I'm really doing with the flanger. Just kind of adding that, that phase amount there to just to kind of, just to make it sound more of like an underwater wishy-washy type of feel. The next thing I went ahead and added was this one knob pumper. And go ahead and bring this on the screen here so you see exactly what that looks like. It's by a company called Waves. I'll leave the link down in the description below. And let's go ahead and listen to what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. 
So just giving the track just a little bit more movement is equivalent to doing like a side chain input. But instead of doing the side chain input, I'm basically just using this one knob pumper to achieve that same effect. All right, so the next thing I went ahead and did was add another filter. And let's see what's going on with this particular filter here. So it sounds like I'm just adding additional cutoff here. I'm, this time I'm cutting it at 260. And let's go ahead and listen one more time. Very subtle. And then let's remove it. So again, just kind of cleaning up that low end sounds like what I'm doing with this particular filter. The next thing I added here was a reverb, just to give it some more space. So what this reverb looks like, I'm using the hall setting. Got the reverb time set to around 9.0 seconds here. Then we have the 61% on the room size, pre-delay, 160 milliseconds. Then we talked about the, uh, the mix here is at 20%. Got the dampening. Just, just very subtle what I'm doing with the uh, reverb here. So let's go ahead and listen without and then with one more time. So again, without. And then with. So again, everything that I'm doing with this particular track is just basically trying to give it just some more filling, some more textures. So again, I'm using the flanger. Well, starting with Serato sample, I'm using the filter inside of the Serato sample. Then I'm using the flanger. Then we're using the one knob, another filter, and then a reverb just to give it to space and round everything all up. So that's how I get that big massive sound. So let's go ahead and play it again without the effects here on this channel here. And then with the flanger, the filters and reverb here. And then in the hook, I have a, a de -esser. It's pretty much catching those S sounds uh, for the sample that I'm using, again, in the, in the hook here. And then I also added an EQ just to kind of round everything off and just tighten up that sound. So can't really even hear those two plugins, but they're there, again, for the hook. All right, so that pretty much makes up that sample there. The next thing I want to go ahead and tackle here is going to be the drums. And that's going to be right here on B. So let's go ahead and start with... Let me go ahead and mute this actually here. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the perk hit. All right, so that perk hit starts right here. And then all I'm really doing is adding just a little bit of meta verb just to kind of bring out that reverb that's already in the sample. So I'll go ahead and enable this here. Again, just very subtle, just adding that reverb in that's already there. And you can see the settings down here. Got the mix at 15%, the size 70%. 
then I take away some of that low end and then adding just a touch of high end just to give it that more of that presence. And then I got it panned about negative two, so over to the left here. So without, and then with the reverb, the metaverb, Then I also added a beat delay just to kind of give it some more movement between like the left and the right, just kind of give it that stereo, that stereo space here. So without these plugins, and then with it. All right, so the next thing I have here is a clock sample. And again, I'm using Serato sample for this particular sample. And go ahead and play exactly what is going on there. So it's just a sample of a clock tick tock. Downloaded right off of YouTube. And then I'm adding a filter just to kind of give it some of that uh, clarity there. So I'm just removing some of that low end. So let's go ahead and go to my other screen here. And let's go ahead and listen to it one more time without the filter. And then with the filter. And you can see the settings here again. I'm using the band pass. Got it at 1.9, resonance at 11, and not really adjusting anything over here. And then also, because it's like a transient, I want to enhance that transient that I'm already hearing. So I added a transient master. So this is without the transient master. This is with the transient master. And also with the transit master, as you can hear, it got a little bit louder because I do want that extra volume instead of using this uh, fader here, I decided to use the transit master. So the next plugin I added was a compressor and I'm just using this compressor just to give it some, a little bit more volume. Just enhancing that transient. And then last but not least, I'm adding a reverb just to give it some more space. And I'm using a layered clap that comes in somewhere here, but let's go ahead and take a listen here. So just add in some saturation. Adding some meat to the track, and then I'm adding a reverb. Again, just keeping it pretty consistent with the hall setting here. And then I have the reverb time set to 4.6. Room size set to 80%. Got the pre-delay turned up to 170 and the mix is at 30%. And again, I'm just using the mix right here on the track because it's convenient. And then, like I said, just dialing it in just a little bit so it could be kind of felt and heard just a little bit here. So without the plugins on the layer clap, And then with the plugins here. All right, so moving along, I got some extra sounds here. Let's see what's going on here. I have the bass. Let's see, let's see here. So it looks like it starts at 17. So let's listen to what's going on with the bass here.
believe this bass came from either Omnisphere or the Phantom. I can't quite remember. But anyhow, I did add a bite. And I just wanted to add some more, some more of that grit to the track here. All right, then I added a one knob. Again, this is the pumper. And with the bite, I did want to say I'm adding like some saturation just to get that grit. So you can see the settings, I'm adding some jitter, some crunch, but just really bumping up that saturation, which is important. And then of course I added the one knob, which is by Waves. We talked about that already. And then I have this last plug in here, which is a low air, just trying to get some of that low end. Again, this is also by Waves, so this is without. And this is with the low air. So that is sounding pretty good there. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that in there. The next thing we have here, let's see, go back to my other screen. It looks like I'm using a piano. Let me see what this piano is doing here. Oh, yes. Yeah, so just some extra chords that I played for the sample just to kind of overlay. So I just won't be using the, the actual sample the whole time. I just went ahead and played some chords and then recorded it inside the machine. So let me go ahead and show you what effects that I'm using here. So again, I'm using an audio plugin. Got my sample loaded that I recorded into the machine. And then the first thing I'm doing is adding a beat delay. So you can see the settings here. I got the beat delay at 2 16ths for the time. I got the feedback at 60%. And then again, the mix is dialed back at 14%. Got the crossover at 86%, split at 88%, and the stereo at 100%. And then it's just giving that nice little left to right feel. All right, so the next plugin that I'm using here is the Reflex. And this is more for like a texture that I'm kind of adding to the track here. So this is without it. with it. All right, so now I'm adding the saturator in here and this is again a stock plugin right inside of the machine software. As you can hear, it just got louder because I'm using it more of like a gain slash saturating it. So instead of using the gain, the, the fader here, I'm using the gain inside of the saturator just to kind of get that level up to where I think it should be. And to me, it sounds really good right here. So without it. And this is with it.
All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is the toms. And I have this right here on number one, and we're going to start at measure nine here. All right, so the first thing you're going to notice right off the bat is going to be the reverb, just giving it some space. And this is very, like, extremely subtle. When I say it's very subtle this time, it's extremely subtle. It's at 2%. The next thing I did is add some replica. And this is a pretty cool plugin here. And basically what it does, it's like an echo but I'm using it for like a filter effect. So it's just giving it some nice texture. Again, I'm using Byte. Adding in that saturation again. See what the jitter, 0% crunch, nope. So I'm just basically adding in that saturation, which is the most important thing, is like what I love using with Byte. So without it, with it. The next effect that I'm using here is the lo-fi. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in there, take off my EQ, talk about that in a minute. Talk about the transit master in a minute as well. So let's go ahead and look at the lo fi. So as you can see here, I'm adjusting the sample rate. Got the bits at 9.2, the mix at 1%. Got the stereo turned all the way up and the smooth all the way down, 0%. So basically with this, again, I'm just adjusting the sample rate and just, just a little bit just to add that, that grit again, just to kind of just degrade that sample, just, just a little bit more. And I added an EQ. See right here, I'm removing that low end at about 58 hertz, and then got it at negative 20. Then I'm removing some of that low mid at negative 2 dB at about 389, so about 400, where it starts to sound kind of just like a little bit muddy to me. So you want the tom to sound a little bit clean, but I do want that filter effect at the same time. So again, I'm bump bumping up the high end, the high mid, and that's at 6 dB. And we got the width set at 4.0 and the width, or the, I'm sorry, the frequency is at 117. Just kind of spreading it out just a little bit. And then the high end, I got it set to 8.0 dB. And then I have it, the frequency at 5041. It's about 5,000 hertz or so. It's a transient instrument, so I want to add that attack to it. So I'm adding a transient master. So instead of using replica for what I'm trying to do, I decided to go with something more basic, such as this beat delay here, which sounds something like this. So just giving that track a lot of movement. The next thing I added was a distortion. Just bumping up that saturation, giving it some of that low end back again, changing the tone. Got the mix at 11%. Got the focus up and then the definition all the way up. So without it,
with it. The next plugin that I'm using here is this Meta Flanger. It is this plugin right here. Go ahead and pop it on the screen so you can see it. So this one is the blur setting, and it's just going back and forth, just kind of giving it that space and just kind of just giving it like a nice little a movement type of feel. So without it, and then with it, last but not least on this one here, I'm using the compressor just to kind of tame everything and glue everything together. So you can see I'm using the compressor, which is down here and got it just compressed a little bit, got the attack, all my attacks are going through, all the trends can go through. Got the amount at 100% and the release is at 40 milliseconds. So again, let's listen to what it sounds like with none of these plugins on the actual track. So again, this is without any plugins. And then this is with all the plugins instantiated here. So the next thing I have here is this reverse piano sample. I'm gonna go ahead and play it right here. It's on D. I'm gonna go ahead and solo this up. And as you can see, I'm not using any plugins for that. And I created all this inside a machine, just took the piano that I was playing and then just reversed it. And you can do that if you do uh, hit S on your, on your keyboard, come down here to sample, go to edit, and then you can reverse the sampler. So if I was to reverse this and play it, this is what it sounds like without a reverse. And so again, if you reverse it, get this sound right here. The next thing I added was a reverse symbol, just kind of taking us into the verse. So I'll go ahead and play that for you here. Using a little bit of automation on the pan here. And you can see that is going on right here. So as you can see again, just kind of panning out left to right. And to give it a bigger sound, I'm just using this plugin called Ice, which is like a spatial reverb. So check this out. So that is sounding real good. So let's go ahead and add some of these instruments back in so we can kind of see where we're at. So this is a tambourine hit and it already has the reverb on there. So that was a good sample that I used here. And that's a part of mixing is just, you know, getting that, those right samples, picking the right sounds. So that's what that sounds like.
add these sounds back in here. Take out the kick. I'm not using this kick. Alright, so last but not least, I do want to talk a little bit about what is going on with the master section. Just want to make sure I'm not skipping anything else in the meantime. This is for the hook here, so I'm going to go ahead and put that back in. Everything is looking good. Just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Got the hook piano, got the bass. We did talk about the bass. Um, Yes. The bass comes in at 17. Let me listen to that really quick. All right, so yeah, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the master section. This is what really brings out the, the mix. Like once you're done with the actual mix, you can either master in here or you can kind of use this as like a like a sub, uh, sub mix here. So I think for this one here, I'm using it as a sub master. So let's go ahead and go through this really quick and see what I'm actually using. So I'm using like a compressor. Let's go ahead and listen to with it and then without it. Without it. And then again, this is with it. So just kind of gluing everything together uh, with this one here and kind of doing some, some volume things here going on. Got the amount at 50%. Got the knee all the way down, the attack all the way up, which is allowing those trends to pass through. And then I got the release at 100 milliseconds here. I got my gain all the way up. The next thing I added was a solid EQ. So with this one, what I'm hearing going on is some high end. That looks like I'm adding in some low end as well. So you can see the settings here. I got it at a 3 dB at a 40 hertz, which is just boosting that low end. Want to be able to hear that sub bass, especially when that build comes in. You definitely want to hear that bass. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and play that for you really quick so you can hear what's going on without the EQ and then with the EQ. So this is without when that bass comes in. And then this is with the solid EQ and listen to that bass. So just add in some of that bottom end, kind of just making it sound really good at the bottom and then that top end as well. So let's go ahead and go back to the EQ so you can see some of the settings that I'm using here. So Again, the low frequency, I'm boosting 3 dB at 40 hertz, and then I'm boosting almost 10 dB at like 20 kilohertz here. And then adding that extra clarity on that high end. All right, so the next thing I went ahead and did was add this flanger here. And 
I don't know what it is about adding a flanger. Just to me, it's more like a texture thing. So I went ahead and boosted it about 3%. And that's it's like one of my secret sauce and just something that I just kind of do just to add a little bit texture and kind of give it that width. So the next thing I added was a limiter. And let me go ahead and show you what is going on with the limiter. So just really squashing the track. And then I'm also bringing down that ceiling as well. Cause like I said, again, this is like, I'm using it as like a sub mix before I add my really my master plugin on here, which is gonna be this uh, Puig Child 670. So let's go ahead and listen to what that's doing to the track. So again, without it. And then this is with it. So you can hear how the track is just slowly coming together. And then again, this is like the sub mix here. So I'll probably bring down that level just a little bit more before I run it through my final, which would be the drummer 1973, which is in my rack over here. And so that's pretty much the whole track. So let me go ahead and play it again. This is without the, the master plugins here. So let's go ahead and take these plugins off. And then let me go ahead and press play here. Open the compressor. And then let's go ahead and plug them right back in and listen to what it's sounding like now. And then last but not least, which is my secret sauce. If you made it to the end of the video, I want to thank you for tuning in. I have added this P Mix Comp, which is basically my secret sauce plugin. Well, not really a plugin, but I'm just kind of running it through a compressor and just parallel compressing it. So you can see my routing here. I got G1, G1. It's all it's all routed through G1 here, which is right here. So I have the going out of the F1 into the G1, which is right here. And then let me go ahead and show you what it sounds like. So again, this is without it. And then this is with it. So I'm going to play it one more time, taking it in and out. And I just want you to just listen to it really quick.
right, and that is the track. I want to thank you for tuning in. It's your boy, Young Fizz, a.k.a. Mr. Dope. Start us on Instagram. I will leave all the links in the description below to some of the plugins here. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment down below. If you thought it was fire, leave a fire, hit that like, subscribe, and we will see you on the next video. It's your boy, Young Fizz. Thank you for tuning in. We out.